Imagine you're by yourself, walking down the sidewalk, and see a man approaching you in the opposite direction. This man is also alone. However, he doesn't look as if he is very friendly. What most of us would do is we would try to avoid this awkward encounter. We would pull our phones out, stare at them intensely, avoid eye contact at all costs, maybe even have 911 dialed just in case. What if I told you that this man who's a rock star? Would you approach him then? Probably pull your phone out, take a cool selfie, post it on Instagram, hashtag sex, drugs, rock and roll. <laughs> well, let's go back before you knew this man was a rock star. Why don't we approach him with our words and start a conversation? Is it because we're too shy, too reserved to open up to somebody we don't even know? Is it because he's a serial killer about to kidnap us? Maybe. Well, as are this man is probably thinking something quite similar to us. What if I told you that the same scenario, when applied to another context, results in something completely different? For instance, let's change the setting to somewhere in Central America. We'll keep everything else the same. The odds of one of those strangers passing by one another, saying hello, or starting a conversation is much greater. Because the culture down there considers it rude to pass by somebody without acknowledging their presence. Language gives us this ability to connect with others, even if they are strangers to us. And what better way of doing that than learning a new language? And no, I don't mean taking one Spanish class because you think the instructor is attractive. <laughs> I mean becoming conversational, learning about the culture, maybe even experiencing that culture firsthand. During my junior year of undergrad, I made the life-changing decision to go and live in Costa Rica for four months. While I was there, I studied the language profusely because I wanted to make the most out of my experience. Every day, I would go out of my comfort zone and interact with Costa Ricans, or what they like to be called, chicos, to learn the language. Along the way, I'm proud of the fact that I made some amazing friends down there. But these were different relationships. These relationships opened my eyes to new possibilities, challenged my beliefs, and showed me what it was really like to see the world from a different perspective. When I returned home, I held on to these values, and I applied them to my existing relationships. They showed me how to use communication better, and how to reveal some emotion that I would otherwise reserve for my thoughts. Adding an aura of exclusivity, and strengthening the bonds of my relationships. One way I used my second language was to stay connected with one of my best friends from Costa Rica. Every day we would exchange voice messages, talking about our lives, sharing ideas, and so on. It came to the point where we weren't just practicing our second language, we were connecting on a whole other level. I began confiding in him for advice, support, and a good laugh. It was like I couldn't speak English with him, or else it would ruin our bond. We were both emotionally invested in this language that we exchanged. And it brought in the way we used commu communication throughout the rest of our relationships. Cul er, sorry. Um, one way that I used this new skill was to uh, broaden my social network and strengthen the bonds of that social network. Culture is a huge influential factor in this. It is a huge influential factor when it comes to articulation of language and the formation of relationships. These sources are extremely powerful and persuasive because they're everywhere you look and attributed to almost everything you do or say. But luckily, we don't just live in one world culture. There are so many different types and versions of culture that we can't even count. Which means there are so many different ways we can use this wonderful gift of language to not only benefit us, but those we surround ourselves with. Maybe even a person you pass on the street. From a sociolinguistic standpoint, the utility of this type of knowledge not only benefits 
your personal relationships can improve your professional relationships as well. We all have formal and informal relationships where we adjust the means of our speech in accordance to that relationship. For instance, the Spanish language is one of the many languages that has two versions of the subject pronoun you. Usted is the formal version, and tú is the informal version. They both mean you, however, depending on the context, the situation, and the relationship you have with the listener will depend on which version is used. One, for example, if I were to speak with my professor, I would use the usted version to construct a respectful and open environment of conversation. However, if I were to speak with my friend, I would use the tu form to show a nice social, relaxed, and open environment also for conversation. Every language has this type of guideline. However, since in English we do not see a direct change in wording, it is difficult for us to recognize this pattern. Because therefore, once we, therefore once we learn a new language, we learn more about our own culture and our own, and our own language. Because we have something else to compare it to. It is in this matter of understanding this change or this alteration of perspective that is most beneficial. Because if you apply it correctly, it can make an acquaintance, a friend, or a colleague a trusted asset. The way we move from one version of language to the next during conversation is referred to as code switching. Code switching is most common between multilinguals when they use multiple aspects of language or multiple languages to converse. By incorporating these diverse aspects of their speech, they broaden the way they can connect with others, strengthening their social network and the people they, can, they surround themselves with. For me, code switching occurs when I'm walking down the hallway with a friend. As me and my friend walk, we speak English very casually. However, if I see my Spanish professor walking towards me, as soon as he passes, I code switch to a formal version of Spanish and have a brief conversation and say hello. Now, my Spanish professor can speak English just as well as me and I. Yet the decision to modify my speech in accordance to his presence is key to maintaining a strong professional relationship with him. It not only shows that I accept his status and I respect his domain of expertise, it shows that I'm flexible, capable of adapting to changing situations new perspectives, and other cultures. Everybody experiences code switching, whether you're bilingual or not. It is obvious that you change the way you speak in front of your mother as opposed to your best friend. If you didn't, you would probably have a permanent handprint on the side of your cheek. <laughs> Nonetheless, the way you articulate yourself depends on, the ver uh, depends on your knowledge of the process of communication and its importance in relationships. A second language not only enhances this process, it makes you more cognitively, cognitively aware of what to say, and most importantly, how to say it. It not only enriches your mind, it enriches the people you surround yourself with. It gives you the confidence and ambition to share your ideas, emotions, thoughts, and opinions to those that will listen. We all could use better communication in our lives, especially in this digital age. So don't just learn a new language to put it on your resume. Learn a language to become more cultured as a person, more diverse with new perspectives, and more emotionally aware so that you can invest in the relationships that you have, and maybe gain some new ones along the way. I'd like to end on a quote by Nelson Mandela. He once said, you speak to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you speak to a man in his language, that goes to his heart. Thank you.